Welcome back to this video tutorial. From this video onwards, we can start the fourth module and this is the uh, memory system concepts. So before starting uh, different memory system configurations and all, we can just refresh some uh, revise some basic concepts about the memory system. Memory system, the basic concepts. Okay, memory consists of millions of storage cells which can store a bit of information having the value one or zero. So memories are uh, designed as different cells, and each cell can store a single bit of value, uh, single bit of information, and the information may be zero or one. And these storage cells are made up of semiconductor cells. The memory is organized such that a group of n bits, group of n bits referred as word can be stored or retrieved in a single basic operation. That means one memory word means set of bits, set of n bits that can be accessed in a single memory access operation. A memory access operation means a single memory read operation or a write operation. So a memory word means a group of n bits that can be accessed in a single memory access operations like read or memory read or memory write operation. A unit of 8 bits and is named as 1 byte and a unit of consecutive 8 bits form a group and is named as 1 byte. If the word length number of bits in a word of a computer is 32 then the word can be then the word can show 4 bytes of information. This is just an example suppose the word length equal to 32 bits 32 bit means a combination of Mm, for 8 bits group that means 4 bytes combination okay each byte in the memory is assigned a distinct address information such memory organization is known as byte addressable memory byte addressable memory means each byte one byte means 8 bits of information so each byte in the memory is assigned a distinct address value the maximum size of the memory that can be used in any computer is determined by the addressing scheme. So the addressing scheme depends upon the maximum size of the memory that can be used in any computer system. Addressing scheme means number of bits used to address the particular memory which always depends on the maximum size of the available memory. Right? So, consider this example, if our memory capacity is 64 KB, 64 KB means, 64 means 2 raised to 6, 1 KB means 2 raised to 10, as a total 2 raised to 16. So, 64 KB can be represented as 2 raised to 16. So, if this total or maximum capacity of the memory is 2 raised to 16 or 64 KB, in such situation, we need a minimum of 16 bits of uh, address information need to uniquely address each of the byte present in the memory. Similarly, suppose our memory system, a memory is of size 4 GB. 4 GB means 2 raised to 2 into 2 raised to 30. 1 GB means 2 raised to 30. As a total, 2 raised to 30 plus 2, uh, sorry, 2 raised to 30 into 4 means 2 raised to 2. So that as a total, 2 raised to 32 size. In such situation, we need a minimum of 32 bits of address bits needed to uniquely address each of the bytes present in the memory system. Similarly, suppose the capacity of the available memory is 1 TB that is 2 raised to 40 then we require a 40 bits of address information needed to uniquely address each of the bytes present in the memory. Most modern computers are byte addressable memory. Byte addressable memory means each byte present in the memory is associated with a unique address value. Byte locations have addresses like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 2K minus 1. Suppose uh, the capacity of the uh, memory is 2 raised to K. 
then we need k bits of information to address the entire memory okay so the k bits are used to uh, same address for different bytes and the address values are ranging from 0 1 2 etc up to 2k minus 1 2 raised to k minus not 2k minus 1 2 raised to k minus 1 okay for a 32 bit computer 32 bit computer means word length equal to 32 bits each word is assigned the address 0 4 8 etc the suppose the word length of a computer is 32 bit then word is assigned address the first word is assigned with an address 0 then after skipping the first 4 bytes the first 4 bytes here form a word of 32 bits length so after skipping the first 4 words 0, 1, 2 and 3 next word start from byte address 4 so the next second word address is 4 4, 5, 6 and 7 form the second word. So the third word address starting from 8. And so and so the last word address is starting from 2 raised to k minus 4. Is it clear? There are two ways that the byte addresses can be assigned across the word. That is uh, about big Indian method and little Indian. All these topics we have already learned in the first module itself. So just revise what is big Indian and little Indian method. Big Indian arrangement is uh, sorry. Big Indian means assigning the lowest memory byte address to the MSB data byte. Similarly, little Indian means assigning the lowest available byte memory address. Sorry, lowest byte address of the memory is assigned to the lowest data byte of the available data so for more clarification just refer, refer our videos uh, uh, present in the first module okay big indian arrangement is used in the uh, 68000 processor little indian arrangement is followed in intel processors arm architecture can be configured to use either of these arrangement uh, little Indian or big Indian okay next uh, about a very <coughs> sorry about the connection of memory to the processor various connection requirements in order to communicate memory with the processor okay here it is the processor part this is the memory part here we have we have already familiar with this type of special purpose registers MAR and MDR MAR memory address register MDR is the memory data register data transfer between the memory and the processor takes place through the use of two processor registers MAR and MDR these special purpose registers are used for supporting data transfer between the processor and memory both data write and uh, data read operation okay if mar is k bit long and mdr is n bit long just assume memory address register is of size k bits and mdr is of size n bits then the memory may contain up to 2 raised to k addressable locations and n bits of data are transferred between the memory and processor if the memory contains up to 2 raised to k addressable location because our MAR register is of size k bits then the memory size or memory we can address 2 raised to k different address location in our memory so that the maximum capacity of this memory is 2 raised to k okay similarly MDR equal to n bits what's the meaning we can transfer a data of length n bits at a time okay n bit of data are transferred between the memory and processor at a time because our MDR size here is taken as n bits. During a memory cycle, n bits of data are transferred between the memory and the processor. This is just an explanation of this point. If MDR equal to n, that means a memory cycle transfer a data of size uh, n bit. Okay. This transfer takes place over the processor bus. The process, okay, all these transfer like address information transferring and data transferring and control information transferring, all these types of transfers are takes place through a special bus 
are a group of wires known as the bus or processor bus so the processor bus has certain uh, divisions subdivisions like address lines data line and control line address lines are used for transferring the address information so only data bus are used for transferring the data that means memory words and control lines actually uh, transfer certain control information like whether to perform read operation or write operation this is actually read or write bar okay mfc is actually a special control signal indicate that memory function is completed and is generated by the memory okay and also these lines are used for uh, supporting the interrupt activities okay the control line is used for coordinating data transfers using this data bus as well as the address bus so control lines the basic working principle is actually the controlling entire data transfer activities right next is about what is a memory read operation and a memory write operation memory read means the processor reads a data from the memory by loading the address of the required memory location into mar register and resetting the read or write bar line to 1 this read or write bar line to 1 means want to perform an operation of read if this read or write bar is equal to 0 means the write or the complement part is active now that means we want to perform a write operation here it is read or write bar equal to 1 means the read part is active now memory responds by placing the data from the address location onto the data lines and confirms this action by asserting an mfc signal through the control line upon receipt of this mfc signal the processor loads the data in the data line into the mdr register so just go back to this diagram once more so first processor want to place the address information which is available in the mar register to this address bus so after uh, fixing the correct or exact memory address location which is specified in this bus then access the data and is put here in the data bus okay and also the memory want to place this mfc signal to is an actually this is an acknowledgement to the processor to indicate that the requested data is now available in this data bus so the mdr can fetch data from this bus to um, the process can fetch data from this bus to mdr and later this mdr data is placed into some register associated with the uh, processor okay we have already learned about this activity activities in the first module itself okay similarly about the memory write operation the processor write the data into the memory location by loading the address of the memory location into mar register and the data into mdr and setting the read or write bar line here to zero means we want to perform a write operation so setting equal, uh, this line value as zero means write the complement part become active the memory respond by placing the data from the data line on to the address location and confirm this action by asserting an mfc signal okay go back again so in order to perform a write operation processor want to place the address location on which the processor want to write here through this address bus first place the address value in the mar register later into the address bus and also write the content want to write onto the memory location into mdr register then into the data bus okay then set this value uh, this control line read or write complement as zero means the processor want to perform a write operation Okay, after completing our operation, memory generate the MFC signal. It's actually an acknowledgement to the processor to indicate that the operation is completed now. Okay. Next is uh, about some measures to identify or measure or to calculate the speed of memory unit. They are memory access time and memory cycle time. What's the difference between this memory access time and memory cycle time? It's very important. So remember as a part of examination okay 
memory access time and memory cycle time memory access time means it is the time that elapses between the initiation of a memory operation and the completion of that operation time between the read and mfc signal it is the time that elapses between the initiation of a memory operation and the completion of the operation time between the starting and ending of a memory access operation memory access operations like read or write okay so how to identify this start and end the start means just placing the request then end indicated by the receiving of mfc signal so access time is the amount of time it takes the processor to read data in data or instruction and information from memory so time is it uh, access time memory access time is the amount of time it takes by uh, takes uh, by the processor to read data or in instruction or some other information from the memory a computer's access time directly affect how fast the computer processes data so access time depends on the processing power of the computer system okay memory cycle time means it is the minimum time delay that required between the initiation of the two successive memory operation time interval between two successive memory access operation time between two successive read signal or time between two successive write signal or time between two successive read or write signal so any type of memory access operation we can consider here and the memory cycle time means the time interval between or delay between two successive memory access operations cycle time is the time usually measured in nanoseconds and is defined as or it is the interval or delay between the start of one random access memory access to the time when the next access can be start okay when uh it is start counting when start one random access memory access operation and end the counting end when the uh, star uh, sorry the counting end when the next access operation start that means the memory cycle time is the interval between two successive memory access uh, operation that means the counting of memory cycle time start when the first access operation start and end when the second access operation start okay cycle time consists of or cycle time is actually contributed by the latency the over overhead of finding the right place for the memory access and preparing to access it so cycle time means the time of or delay or the latency or the time required to exactly fix the requ uh, requested memory location and preparing to access it plus the time taken to transfer data to that location then only one access time completed okay cycle time is a combination of latency plus transfer time okay so uh, this is about types of memories we have two types of memories volatile and non volatile volatile means the content may erase after uh, losing the power non volatile means the content remains the uh, even though the power power supply lost okay so based on this volatile we have static ram and dynamic ram in non volatile we have classification rom and flash memory in rom we have prom e prom and e e prom similarly for flash nor and nand based flash so we can uh, study all these topics all uh, we can study in detail about this volatile and non volatile memories in coming videos